well, before we talk to the former rookie of the year, um, aka Bo literally Jones. the goat of being an underdog and just slaying in the league, I thought we should talk a little bit about my comeback, even though my oh, comeback God. is defined as oh, Lord. Um, me playing in a co-ed league with men over the age of 30 but a comeback nonetheless there's a serious topic i need to talk about one when where has the day come where there's no black cleats okay joe this is a serious issue okay a serious issue Mm. i went online i said okay if i'm going into this if i'm i'm warming up the hamstrings we're gonna really do this i am stretching Mm -hmm. prior to the the game okay Mm -hmm. I need quality cleats. We can't mm-hmm. we can't be buying the bullshit at Dick's Mm-mm. Sporting Goods. You got to buy the high quality. Go on Nike.com and do it. Mm-hmm. My options were flaming red, yep. grass green, lime green, purple. I'm like, your girl was a left back. I wasn't wearing like the green cleats, like the center forward. I didn't score goals. I wasn't doing, I'm like, I just want some black tampos. And I also don't want to spend three hundred fifty dollars. Like yeah. I'm committed, but I'm not that committed. Like, what's the deal? What, I don't what? know. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, like I'm, I'm not that fashionable, but damn, you can't just get some black cleats in this big. I, dude, I like I said, it's just the world we live in. Flashy kids. I also, as everyone, let me just update everyone on what I'm doing physically. I've also decided to do a strength. I'm getting into strength now. My legs are so sore. I did squats the first time. You want to know what my exercise is? Sure. Because I'm, my su- surgery is finally scheduled for my right hip labor. Woo! December 17th. Get it done. Let's go. The only Swap thing. Family. We need a lot of love that day. Yeah. The only thing that I'm getting into is coaching. Being on my feet. That's my exercise. And you, you know, know what? Today. What, no, no, no. Today. Today, coach, coach, let me jump in as a bumper Love it. and let me tell you how I rocked that bumper. You, I it. one touched it. Um, if you also want to see, uh, check out our TikTok. Um, it's my one moment of the week when I get to jump in the pregame shooting activity. And, um, it I honestly brings it. me joy because Joe sends me everything in advance. And I swear to you um it's also on instagram it's, it's, it's a real i mean it makes it me so brings happy. Me joy it brings me so much joy on a more dark note um i do want to touch on some news it'll be a little bit obviously our pods come out a little bit after we talk about them so this is something that despite it coming out now and you know we're going to be putting this out in a, a few weeks i do think it's something i do want to get your thoughts on joe because i feel like yeah. And I'm putting you on the spot here. So to be fair, Joe, probably this, I know, but there, um, it has been released press release by the NWSL today that the Washington coaching fire was for cause. Um, and I think it's relevant because, you know, Beth gets into some really positive things, um, in regards to her coaching experience with Vaco, but I got to tell you, like, I'm starting to get a little frustrated with this. Like, I feel like we're in defense in a weird way. Like from the end of the standpoint, like everything's defensive versus like being ahead of the game where it's like, this should not be happening. And instead it's happening. And then like, we're trying to scramble and it's like being down a goal every single time. And um, I'd be curious to get your thoughts just from like, you're you know early in your coaching career right this is the first season you're like a full-time assistant very much facing week-to-week issues in regards to you know your 20 year old women 19 year old women having to help them through the ups and downs of a season as well as life um just your thoughts on like obviously how that that relationship has played out but also like I gotta say like I, I don't think it's talked about enough like that kind of impact despite it being your career and your professional like I get they're like 25 26 but at the same time that's like your authoritative figure yeah I think being older as you know 
any coaching staff, like you are the leader of the group, the leader of the team, leader of the staff, if you're the head coach, and you set the precedent, you set the culture. So if the culture is set in a very negative tone, that's going to have such a negative impact on the team in general on the field, but even off the field when it comes to, like I kind of mentioned in in the, the pod with Beth is I always ask the girls like, okay, like, how are you actually mentally? Like, how are you doing today? And I think that goes very under the radar of the importance of like connecting with players on a outside the, outside the lines kind of, kind of way. Um, And obviously that didn't really happen in Washington. (laughs) I mean, it's very clear Uh, the care and of the emotional well-being of players was not number one priority. And my coach and I talk about it all the time. Like people are, when they're happy, when you are a happy person, you're playing better. So as a coach, why aren't you trying to create a happy environment? I think that's just the, 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 what it, what it boils down to. And it's just, it's consistently proven even at the absolute highest level in the NFL, in the NBA. I mean, these guys are making it's boundless money. And yet the team that typically is winning is Is the the team team that is enjoys themselves. Like, yeah. I mean, even like, look at Tom Brady. I mean, this dude looked like he was on like a vacation. He's having so much I'm fun. Like, I want to be 40 and like chucking balls and like loving my bros. And like, this is like, looks like a dream. Yeah. And it's just like, how honest to God, like how does a Washington player right now perform well? I mean, I every other week it's like a postponed game because of all the COVID stuff going on. Then you have like all this public stuff Hoopla. about your coach it's just like you can't focus on your sport and like anybody else yeah exactly you're like mm-hmm. you need to finish your wine to even talk about it because it's like after everything else you sit here and you're just like okay um <laughs> but I think it also you know talking about it in a negative light let's kind of shift and talk about it in a positive light like true these girls are going in every single day and continuing to bust their bum. And I think that kind of can go unnoticed that like, yes, in the news and in the Washington post and all these things, like their leader is been scrutinized and publicly, like it's been identified of all these things, but yet let's kind of shed a positive light on these girls that are freaking continuing to be professional athletes and act in a professional way whereas their leader didn't so I think that kind of goes back to maybe their leader obviously was not a good leader but yet they as a collective unit and as a collective group have decided to continue every day to grind to be better and I kind of think that's kind of my opinion on it all you know what it is is it is what it is with this with the coaching staff yeah um we can't do anything about it all we can do is move forward. All we can do is continue to make positive changes and address it and address all these negative things. But yet let's not forget the women who are continuing to play for this Washington spirit club, because one, that's hard to do with all the scrutiny around them, but two, like, it's still their job. <laughs> they still, we yeah. talk about it. We it's talk about point. it. We talk about it on the pod. On yeah. Yep you're still expected to show up and show out. So kudos to all those spirit girls. That's for sure. For sure. Shout out the spirit girls. Yeah. We are thinking of you and we are, you know, with you and hopefully this will, by the time this pod comes out, it'll be a much clearer picture and a more positive picture. And at least we're in a place where things are happening. People are making change. But on a positive note, I'm so freaking stoked for everybody to listen to this podcast with Bethany Balser. I mean, great. 
She spills a little bit of tea that I, I don't, I, even with all my notes, like a bomb tea, like even, a, yeah, um, even you know, with all of my notes, I mean, I found out the, what her city's known for, I found out that she was in the musical industry in high school. Yeah. She, spilled tea. On the, on the she spilled some tea that I didn't find out. So you're going to have to listen. It's awesome. I'm just so happy for her to help share her story. So good, good listen. Enjoy. Bethany Balser. Here we go. I am so flipping excited for this pod. We have Bethany Balser here on the pod, a Spring Arbor University alum. Go Cougs. I'm also a Cougar here at CSU, so go Cougs. Current OL Reign stud, 2019 Rookie of the Year. I mean, every week I go on Instagram, she's player of the week. She's team of the week. She is player of the Uh, NWSL. I mean, welcome to two washups, one bro. Thanks so much for joining us. Wow. What an intro. Thanks for having my intro. Joe Joe is, we gotta be careful with Joe. You got a lot of bees and I just heard a because she is so excited. It's like, I gotta teach Joe just a fun fact for all the listeners. I went to journalism school where you learned that the mic should be a good six inches from your mouth. Joe's like, I keep it very close. <laughs> I feel like I'm at an, like an MMA like fight and out of this ring, Bethany bolster, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, you cracked me up. How you doing? It. I'm great. Just got home from practice actually. So oh, the grind. lovely. It's the grind lovely. never stops. <laughs> All about the grind. I love it. I love it. Let's dive right in um, because there's so much to learn about you, but um, we're going to dive into your youth career. Joe here, I'm not going to take credit. Joe does all of our deep deep research. And let me tell you, this girl knows everything about you. Yeah. Um, And she, I don't really know where she pulls it off, but there is a word on the street uh, that you didn't play club soccer in high school because you participated in school musicals, which is so dope. Um, first off, it's not shocking. You're versatile, not even just in soccer, but just in life. Um, clearly didn't realize you were that versatile. What, uh, what is your favorite musical? Um, and what, honestly, what got you into that? What made you so, I feel like that's like a, it's a, it's a two hobbies that you don't often see together. So I'm just curious. Like, what I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I read that and I was like, you know what? I'm not even surprised. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love that. Yeah. Um, wow, I believe, favorite. Like, just, she, she performs at top <laughs> quality and in everything, including on stage. Yeah. If we're talking like musical, um, I love Footloose. Um, I love Beauty and the Beast. Um, and like non-traditional, I like in high school was obsessed with high school musical. So if that yes. counts as a musical. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Um, 100%. Yeah. And, and then like I became obsessed with Les Mis in college. Um, but it kind of started, my brother actually um, did soccer and musicals as well. And so I would go to his performances. Like he was Lumiere in Beauty and the Beast. And so I just like had so much fun watching it and he like, talked so highly of it and it's funny I the reason I did musicals is because I got cut from volleyball so I tried out for volleyball got cut and I was like what am I gonna do with my time like I want to do something don't really want to do like soccer year round I just wasn't into that and so I was like I'll try out for musical and so my freshman year it was Bye Bye Birdie and I made like the choir like just a little chorus girl dancing in the background and then yeah by my senior year I had a lead and it was just so much fun and obviously like people I would never have met in high school so it was just like this community in and of itself that I loved being a part of and like have some of my best high school memories from like doing that this is Troy Bolton female version legit <laughs> and also like I envied people like you in high school because secretly and I don't think I've ever said this is like I always wanted to like be a lead in a play and I was always like Gir- so what I think was I was your- like bird girl number two and this girl is like doing leads and what was your lead roles. in senior year what was your I, lead I was in Oklahoma I was Aunt Eller so I don't know if you've Solid. seen that one it's no, like, but I can only imagine she's the number one 
<laughs> no, she she was like the out of the three leads, she was probably like the least lead, but um, she was like this old lady. So I didn't even have to have like a really good singing voice. I just got to like hunch my back, have a southern accent, and like walk around and like be this old lady on stage. It was so much fun. Oh, so fun. I mean that literally. I read that. And I was like, I that we must lead off with that question. That must be the lead off question. There's no doubt. That is incredible. I mean, talk about truly versatility. Like. I know, I know. But I said I read it, and I was like. I mean, that doesn't surprise me. She can do it all. Um, okay, so let's kind of talk in a little bit more about this. So you made a decision not to play club year round or soccer year round. In today's world, that seems absolutely mind blowing. Talk about kind of that decision. And then I, this is, here comes my research. Talk about growing up in Michigan salad bowl. I learned that that's what your, <laughs> what your hometown is known for. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how, how, talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think a big part of it is like back when I was in high school, it wasn't completely uncommon for girls to not play club. Whereas like now it's like you sometimes do club year round and don't even play high school soccer. So I think part that contributed to part of it, but also I just had so many other interests and I'm like, I'm in high school, I'm young. I want to like try new things, um, just like expand myself. Um, like I love playing basketball. I liked being a multi-sport athlete. So it, it honestly was just like, okay, there's a soccer season, but then there's also fall season, which we're not going to have be soccer season. So I really just wanted to get involved in as many things as I could um, in high school. And so that's why I chose not to. And obviously at the time I wasn't thinking like, oh, I want to go pro. This might set me back. Um, which probably played to my advantage in the sense of I could, I just had so much fun doing what I was doing and not worrying about what it might lead to or might not lead to. Um, and then, yeah, I, I'm in the salad bowl. Um, describe that. Describe that. Well, like where I'm from, it's pretty, it's farmy. There's like, I don't know why we have that nickname. I think it's because we have like the restaurant that has like the largest salad bar. I think that's why you probably know better than I do. I think it that's is. why. Yeah. <laughs> so like we would play like there there were two schools, like a public school and a private school in my hometown. And whenever they'd play each other, we'd call it like the salad city classic. And oh, you'd God, like you'd, uh, the trophy was like a salad bowl on like a little pedestal that you won. So I guess we took pride in that. So do you like salads? I love salads, yeah. I mean, as you should. You're from this the yeah. mixed salad, whatever it's called. Well, when you can put and put up your heart desires in it, it's kind of like who would love a salad. Very versatile. Um, so then how then leading how did you get into college soccer then? If you kind of were in just that, you know, did you want to play college soccer? Is that something that was in your cards? And obviously it, it ended up being so what led you to Spring Spring Arbor? Yeah, so freshman and sophomore year, I was like, wow, I really want to play soccer in college. And then I was like, wait, do I want to play basketball in college or do I want to play soccer? I was at wrestling between the two, which is kind of back now because I'm really glad I picked soccer. But my sister played soccer at Spring Arbor before me. And so um, she, I was a freshman in high school and she was a senior in high school. She had committed. And I had just spent a lot of time like visiting her there, being around the team, being around the environment. So the coach knew me. I mean, Spring Arbor is obviously really small. And so uh, I had that connection already. And so he kind of started recruiting me my junior year. And I wasn't recruited by anybody because my sophomore year I was hurt. Uh, I had a knee injury. So like opportunities weren't really presenting. So, so Spring Arbor reached out and I was like, yeah, I want to go to this kind of makes all the boxes. Let's do it. I didn't really look anywhere else. That's crazy. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think, I think it's there's like beauty in kind of how your journey has kind of led you here because in ways, to your point before, right? Like not being hyper focused and so like obsessed with the fact of going to a certain program or playing on a certain club team. It kind of seems like. In a way, there was a journey, you went on it, you had fun during it, and it's led you to something really amazing. So let's just give the listeners just a, it, I'm, I'm giggling because you're like, yeah, it's like, I went there, I saw it, and like, that really was the only place I looked, and I went, and boy, did you make an impact. Um, you played at Spring Arbor, obviously, where you won two national titles, you were the player of the year three times, four-time All-American, 
and you scored, I'm going to say this slowly, 129 goals in 98 appearances, which means, yes, she did average over a goal a game. Um, kudos. That's an incredible college career at any level. Um, we're curious. So obviously there's no doubt that you were successful at the NIA, but coming out, was it, an, an, was it, in your, when did it become a realization for you? Like, okay, I want to play professional. I don't know if that was NWSL or Europe or where you were thinking, when did that become a decision? And and knowing you were coming out of a program that maybe didn't have as much exposure as like in the more power five conferences, what was the next step? Was it putting together a game film of yourself? Was it attending um, tryout? Like what, what was the next step in regards to where you were taking your career post-college soccer? Yeah. So initially I was kind of just playing in summer leagues. So like either the WPSL or the UWS uh, and Initially, I was just kind of doing it to like stay in shape. Um, so I played, there was actually a team in my hometown that um, just started that year. And I was like, yeah, let's just go on it. And so that had a lot of big 10. I played them of like had success. I was like, oh, I can compete at a higher collegiate level. Um, and that's when I was kind of like, oh, like, do I want to like, I really want to do this. And so Actually, the following summer, I came out here to Seattle to play with the Sounders women team. Um, so that was all like Pac-12 girls, so maybe another kind of step up. And so once I did well there, it was kind of like, okay, yeah, like this is it. Like this is what I want to do. And so I, my college coach, I gave him so much props. He made so many phone calls for me, really was an advocate um, and really helped me just get my foot in the door with coaches. And so I entered the draft, you know, got my highlight film together fully knowing I probably wasn't going to get drafted, but you know, it goes out to all the coaches. I need the exposure. It can't hurt. And, um, uh, I actually went to Chicago's like open tryout to get invited to their camp. Um, and I got that, but I also got an invite to the Reigns camp. So I kind of had those two options. Um, and cause I just, I wanted to get myself out there however I could. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what was going to come my way. Um, even if I had to make it myself. And so, um, yeah, ended up choosing Seattle. Don't really know why. Every sign would naturally have pointed to Chicago. Just it was closer to home. They initially had more like roster spots open. But I was like, you know, I played in Seattle the summer before. Like, let's go out there. Um, it seems cool. And so obviously it, it worked out. And I'm really glad that that's the way I went. I freaking love that. Like, that is what I love. I may go on a soapbox here, but that's what I love about the game. Like if you're freaking good enough, you're freaking good enough. Like it doesn't matter where you come from, where you're from, like what college you went to. Like if you're part of good, Joe's recruiting pitch now. Yeah. I, cause I coach, so I coach at a D2 school and there's like a couple kids here that I'm like, it doesn't matter where you come it from. True, like though. if you freaking like put the product on the field, like that's all you can ask for, which I'm like, I just love that story even more now that yeah. I'm coaching at the D2 level because it's so, ta they're so talented and it just matters. Like if you get the right coach, if you get in the right system, like if your opportunity, you know, presents yourself um, and sure as heck, did your opportunity come? Um, yeah. So let's you, get a little bit into the, you getting into Seattle now you're becoming yeah. um you're really like, you're just showing up more or less. People, just to give people context, because not everybody understands this. Every year there's girls drafted, which I hate to point out the obvious, but it really unlike, doesn't matter if you're drafted. It doesn't matter. You get really, honestly, it's almost worse in ways because to Bethany's point, she really could have went to any camp and tried to make a team. When you're drafted, they own your rights. You cannot go anywhere else but the team that drafted you. Oftentimes girls, what happens is they go, Sometimes they don't make the team, they're cut, and then they go somewhere else. So you pick Seattle, you go into Seattle. Um, I don't know, maybe you did know some girls because of the fact that you played in the you know WPSL and other, other leagues, but I'm sure coming from a smaller school, I can imagine it was, being, it was a little overwhelming, maybe not knowing as many girls going in. Um, talk about that preseason, because everyone just, again, I'm just giving context for listeners, but what is it, 30, 30 35 days of essentially you're <laughs> they may be housing you depending on the team but like you're basically like off of a contract paying for yourself 
playing every day and just trying to earn a roster spot just to make the team. Um, and at any point, they could just be like, peace. And you have to either find another camp to go try out to or go home or go to Europe. There's other options. Um, so just talk about kind of that journey leaving, as you said, going all the way across the country to a team that obviously has been always successful and you went into a very competitive environment right away. Um, and how did you earn yourself a spot? Yeah, so I did not know a single soul out here. Um, and that initially didn't scare me until I walked into my first meeting and I was like, oh my God, I don't know anybody. I didn't even say hi to the, I didn't even say hi to Vlaco, the coach at the time. I literally just made my way to the back yes. of the room and just sat down. He actually came over to me and was like, are you Bethany? I'm like, yeah, I was so nervous and anxious, but yeah, pack, I packed my bags. I didn't know if I was gonna be there for two days, two weeks, two months, the rest of the year. Uh, just, Why but I was so naive to it, but I feel like that kind of played to my advantage thing out of me. Um, and I remember before I went out there, Vlaco called me and he was like, just so you know, like, this is going to be really, really hard. Like, I don't want you to like thinking like this is going to be like an easy underdog story. Like you're like, it's going to be very, very hard. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got here. I was like, wow, he was right. Like it, it's just such another level of physicality, speed of play. Like I, I honestly could not keep up my first time. I, they like wanted me to sprint all the time for every ball and I'm like I'm not this. like I can't take a play off what are you talking about like it, like just what they expected me to do is to try. Uh, and uh, the funny story lots of people don't actually know um, so I'll give you the tea here um, Ooh. halfway through my rookie year um, yeah I think this is good I think funny halfway through my rookie year Flacco like just has a meeting with me and he's like you know Beth like we were gonna cut you on day two that you were here, but but you had left the locker room for the day. So you had already like got up, left and gone home. So we were like, okay, we'll just like do it tomorrow after training. But like that training, I actually like played out of my mind and they were like, oh my gosh, we have to keep her. And so they ended up keeping me. And I like, that's how like I know, like this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is where I'm supposed to be because like, it's not just a coincidence that like I happened to leave the locker room like, before Insane. you know Insane. like like that like, when he told me that i started crying because i was like yeah first of all ouch also, like why would you <laughs> also, say i mean i get it like, yeah, yeah i know i don't know if he was trying to motivate me like halfway through the season i'm like this isn't working like i'm a little mad um but i'm like so glad oh, i walked wow. out of the room that day um because yeah like i i don't think i realized like i i think i thought going in like oh they'll give me like at least a week to adjust but they were gonna I was, I was a little offended by that but uh, I mean, I wasn't playing the greatest, so yeah. But then third gear, and they were like, "We see something in you, like more of it, like more often." And like when you're in an environment with such top players, like eventually you either elevate to that level or you can't, and then you get cut. And so I just had to keep elevating, and I felt like just with time, like I was adjusting well. Um, and so yeah, like the day before, two days before they played their first game, I got a call. Um, from Blacko, he was literally on the plane to Houston, and he was like, "Hey, we want to offer you a full contract." Because initially, I was just going to be a replacement player for mm -hmm. the national team, like a national team replacement player, because that was a World Cup year. Um, so I was, I was, but I was like, "Yeah, I'll do that." Like, however, I get my foot in the door. Uh, but then they were able to offer me uh, a full contract, which was just crazy. So, Joe, before you jump in, I just I'm just to... shocked. I just I, wait. I just like people are supposed to be in places and things are supposed to happen to people. And like, that was yeah. supposed to, like, you were supposed to freaking walk out that door and hightail it out because you just, that's just what was supposed to happen. I'm just, that just makes me so happy. I love yeah. the way. I mean, I works. don't appreciate this. I don't appreciate him telling her that because I'm not sure. Like, I, I don't know. I think it like is, I, I think it's, I actually, you telling us that gives, I just think it's really good perspective to call out that like, that is how cutthroat it is. And I don't think people see that is that like mm -hmm. at literally any point you could walk in the locker room and they're like, sorry, like there's just no, yeah. And two days, Joe, like <laughs> two days, like you don't get, what if like you have a bad two days? Like, this is like why people are so stressed going to camps because I'm like, the girl could have maybe like just been a little nervous because I don't know. She just like left college and now is like playing with like 
Megan Rapino. You know what I mean? Like it's just <laughs> It's it's just oh, yeah. funny. Like it's it's a good it's a good story because it just proves like how far you've come. And I mean, Vladko probably would have kicked himself if he oh, had yeah. done that. But it's it's I think it just highlights you know more of what we'll get into later. But just like the realities of instability for players and protection of players. That that honestly though just makes me like even a bigger fan of you. That story just made, I just freaking love it. I love it. So, okay. So let's kind of talk about that. So you then get your chance in the first home game of the 2019 season. And um, needless to say, you did not look back. You, you scored in that first game. You became rookie of the year where you won a big fat, good old $50 Chipotle gift card that probably got you three meals plus three sides of guac. Um, Maybe. Talk- Maybe. I don't know. Maybe, maybe yeah, one side of guac. There right now. Yeah, only avocados are expensive. So maybe not even guac. Maybe not even guac. But what was, I know you touched on a little bit, but what was the level jump kind of from the NAIA to the NWSL? And then how do you think you just adjusted so seamless, seamlessly that rookie year? Yeah, I think the reason why I adjusted so seamlessly is because Blacko did just give me a ton of freedom um, to just play and do what I do and not try to micromanage me as a rookie um, because he knew I was going to make mistakes and I think that's obviously the best way you learn um, is by trial and error and so I feel like I never was was never up on the field because I was like I can have freedom I can do what I do best and good things are going to happen because of that so he just had so much belief why everything was so seamless and even my teammates too like I mean, yeah, I came from this no-name school and just, like, joined the team, and all of a sudden I'm starting, but these girls, like, had my back, and they wanted to see me succeed, and so just to be surrounded by people like that and be in a culture that was so positive and uplifting, like, of course you're going to thrive in that, and so I think that's why I had the success I did, and again, just kind of almost being naive to the whole process and just, like, "Mm, I can kind of do whatever I want here, and it's going to be okay, Um, gave me, like, a, a confidence, I think. That's awesome. I also I just, think like it, 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 it's really um, nice to hear that you had that from a coaching perspective, because I think people don't realize how far that goes. And we've talked about this numerous times in the podcast, just like the mentality of so much of this game is mental, right? Like who knows if that one decision happens, like you just talked about, maybe your confidence goes down and, and your career doesn't pan out in another team like it did in Seattle. So it's like, I, you know, I think it just highlights the importance of having that support system. And me and Joe actually talked about this yesterday, like coaching, I think coaches sometimes miss that fact, like that one comment or that one moment that you feed a player confidence can go so far in a season. Um, and to get that from Blatko, who obviously now is the national team coach, but at the time was very well respected. And, um, you know, I just think that that impact for you was probably so great. And it's, I'm glad to hear that, especially like to be transparent in light of some of the news that's come out about other coaches in the league. It's nice to know that there, there have been positive experiences and there are coaches that are currently coaching in the league that are doing this for players and helping them take their game to the next level from a mental standpoint too, not just the physical one. So I just wanted to add that little piece. Joe does that. She's a good, uh, Joe, every time I call Joe, she's got ladies in her office. She's always, she's always bringing them up with positive thoughts and positive. My uh, number, feedback. my number one thing is like, I ask everybody, I'm like, how are you actually mentally today? Like, yeah. put away soccer. Like, how are you doing today? You have tests? Did you have a bad day? Like what's going on? I think it just like, when you, when you feel like a coach cares about you as a person, they're going to fight for you that much, that much harder. At least that's how I always felt as a player. Um, and so I just. That's what I've learned to try to do. Well, do you- let's get into the T, as I like to say as well, because I will say, and I don't give this crown to many people, but you are a excellent Twitter follow. I will just put that out there. I believe everyone should go follow Bethany Bolzer on Twitter because she speaks facts and we need that desperately in the league. Um, and what's amazing about your story and why I think it's just remarkable, your impact is that we've kind of t- touched on it, but like 
I think the biggest disparity between female athletes and male athletes is the fact that we don't have any stability from a financial standpoint, from a lot of different standpoints. But when you don't have that, and at any point, you're not in control of where your career is going, despite any type of performance um, from a contractual standpoint, it's kind of hard to have that confidence, I, I'd say, to be vocal. And I feel like you've done a really good job at speaking out and speaking out on things that are um, are just like, honestly, like necessary to talk about just because they're so blatantly, it's just so blatantly wrong in, in ways that like, if no one says anything, it's like, how are we just looking over this? So I'm curious, like, obviously now, yes, you've been very successful. You won rookie of the year. Um, but I'm sure like any other player, you know, when you don't necessarily have that national team status yet, or those things, there's always that fear of someone taking this away from you. What has given you the confidence to be vocal um, and to speak up for women in this league, including yourself, um, despite kind of that lack of stability. Um, obviously, Seattle loves to have you. I'm not implying anything, but I just think it's there's not a lot of women it's like scary. you. And I don't. It's very scary. And I don't blame me and Joe about, I don't blame them necessarily because it's like I mean I don't know how I would my reaction would be in the league if if I felt you know like I could get cut tomorrow. Um, so anyway, yeah. yeah, I'm just curious, like where that confidence has come and have you always been someone who's, who's kind of felt like a, a vocal advocate? Yeah. Um, it's interesting because that, you know, that fear has never really crossed my mind. Um, which is great. yeah, which sometimes I'm like, should it? Cause yeah, like <laughs> there is so much instability. Um, but I, I would rather speak up and get cut than not say anything, you know, and just Love keep that. going through the same motions, you know? Um, obviously there's been, since I've come like beforehand, like there's been so much work being done and like, I want to continue in that work. And if that means being vocal and using my platform, then that's what I'm going to do. And that's something that I've really tried to take seriously is not only am I a professional athlete, but I feel like the platform that comes along with that is equally as important. And so I've been trying to use that to, to, yeah, just make light of things that people might not know about. That's why I tweeted about what I got for rookie of the year, because you just like, I've just seen so much disparity between men's and women's sports um, since being in this environment and it's just not okay. And I've just seen a lot of sexism and just things I don't like. And I, it would, I just, it would bottle up inside of me if I didn't speak out about it. And so that's what I use my platform for. And um, it, it always gets like a decent response. So it makes me like want to keep doing it. And like, hopefully people are, are seeing what all of us are posting and, and want to help be a part of the change. Yeah. I mean, even for us, like we are not shocked typically, but there are, that one shocked me. That one. I was like, I mean, that one shocked me. We got to just do something like it. And it's funny because me and Joe talk about this too, where it's like, now we're like wash ups retired. But when people, oftentimes we talk about how people often like still identify us as form, like as players. They're like, oh, you were the soccer player. And it's like, well, yes, I was, but I'm no longer. I can barely hit a ball now. But it's funny because they're, they talk about it in this like fantasy type of way. They're like, their eyes light up. They're like the soccer player. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're a professional. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't pay for my groceries in Norway. But like, yeah. It was a good time, but like, it's just the perspective you give is like, it's, it's starting conversation. And I think that's like, at least where we can start where it's like, there's gotta be conversation on these topics because if we just keep staying silent, I mean, look at even the NCAA, like during the women's basketball tournament. I mean, that was insane too. And they just thought they were going to get away with it. Like no one, no one was going to pull their iPhone out. No one was going to say. Yeah. Like we live in a world that like now, like it's you can't get away with it like mm-hmm. you literally can't so like why try because <laughs> we have people that are going to speak out that are going to take pictures that are gonna you know bring the tea out like to continue with the analogy of that but um I feel like every time I am on Instagram I am seeing you as NWC player of the week like crushing it continually Cur- currently the leading goals for in the NWSL how are you sustaining kind of such success despite kind of all the change that has gone through the club, you know, new coaches, new players, 
Um, how are you finding yourself just sustaining that success and just literally putting the goal, putting the ball in the back of the net time and time again? <sighs> I wish I knew. Um, <laughs> I feel like, I, I feel like I, some, I, what I'm noticing is that sometimes I thrive when things are chaotic. Like my, my rookie year, there were so many injuries going around and I was just like, okay, well, we all got to like step up and like go at it. And I feel like this year too, like coaching changes, new players coming in. I'm like, oh, it's going on. Like, let's just put our heads down and like run through a brick wall, you know? Um, I feel like I, I play my best when I don't think, when I don't think about the right thing to do when I just go out and do. And so I've really been trying to have that in the back of my mind and not dwell on my mistakes because I am a perfectionist at heart and like no one's ever going to have a perfect game. You're going to make, you're going to make a bad pass. You're going to miss a shot. And so just giving myself that grace, um, to allow myself to just be free and make mistakes, but also, um, use those mistakes to better myself. Um, that's just kind of what I use to, I feel like propel me into each game to be the best player I can be. I feel like that kind of speaks to like your overall story of just kind of like the, the it seems as though the times in your life where you've kind of just gone with what what's been presented to you like it, it all it ends up falling the way it shall and you are just somebody it, it's clear that like you just put 100 percent to everything you do um and the outcome typically goes well from that i'm curious kind of like speaking more on the mental side of things like how do you think you've built up what I would think to be a great mentality in the aspect of kind of having this like underdog story in a way, but yet you don't seem from the outside, of course, um, as somebody who gets easily rattled, like I would say this year, especially with the rain, like once again, so much change in a really positive way, but it's like you have some of the best players in the world, like interjecting into your team and having to find like continuity and, and get the team environment right. And yet, your play has just been, I feel like a lot of people in your position, like, right, you get a new midfielder in, or you're playing now next to a new forward, or maybe your time, your minutes change or whatever. I feel like you've kind of been so even keel from a foreign standpoint. And I can, I, I would, I would think a lot of that plays a part into how you are as a player from a mentality standpoint. Is there anything you could pinpoint in terms of like how you built that up or kind of your general mentality when playing? I know you said you kind of have this like, let's not make it think too much when I'm on the field, but like from a confidence standpoint, how are you able to like consistently come back and, and enter games with like that freeness? Yeah. Um, kind of what I alluded to earlier, like when you're like, we have such talent on our team and when you're surrounded yeah. by that, like you have to like elevate to it. And honestly, that's like exciting. Um, Cause that means I'm growing as a player um, and helping the team around me. And so I feel like as opposed to like, being afraid of it I just like look forward to it and have that perspective because I don't ever you know want fear to drive my life and there was there was a lot of like inconsistencies at the beginning of the year in terms of who's starting who's getting playing time and that did wear on me um if I didn't show it but like it it like ate away at me because I'm like I want to get on the field like I want to be impactful for for this team and um that was something I had to work through and I had to like earn earn my spot and um that's always a humbling place to come to and then i feel like it just makes everybody around you better when you have that mindset um and are driven in in a healthy way like that um as opposed to you know being upset or bitter um you can either let it motivate you or not and so i feel like i chose the former and so it's allowed me to evolve into this player and be surrounded by incredible players and now we have this awesome team which yeah. is really cool so we're big fans of the rain yeah, big friend. We we've had like, we've obviously we've had so. Is that a had, couple? Like lately, we've had like we got few, Nabber. Nabbers, Nabbers. We had Z on here. Like we've we're Not like right. actually, OL rain stacked on this podcast. I yeah, love it. Quality um, gals. Yeah, quality gals. Good people. Um, okay, so I have a question. that's kind of touching on that. Where do you think you find your your stability outside of yourself? I think when you're playing in the league, there's always like, for me, it was like my family, my current husband, like, where do you find that stability to continue to help you during those kind of unstable periods in the league? Because it's a, it's a freaking wave. Like you're starting one game, yeah. you may not start the next game. You may have a great practice. Like it's an, a roller coaster of emotions. 
what kind of keeps you grounded and stable mentally? Yeah, I think a big thing is, is my faith. Um, as I've, again, alluded to before, like my, mm -hmm. my journey is so crazy that to me, it just like, it gives me such a peace knowing that this is where I'm supposed to be. And I believe that God like wants me. And, and so that's like been, been really huge. And then obviously, yeah, like if I, I her after and before every game, um, she, yeah, obviously she played now she coaches. And so, um, just to have her like walk alongside me through this, um, I'm best friends with my therapist, like there's all these Great, people sure. around who have um, supported me. Yeah. Uh, and just like people that I can turn to when the going gets tough and they're not going to, you know, judge me um, feeling weak or anything like that, but they're just, they're just there for me and they're just there to listen, which is all you can ever ask for someone is just to be present and to show up. And so um, I feel like I have lots of people in my life, um, even yeah, like outside of the soccer community, even that, um, there for me and they see that I'm more than a soccer player um and I obviously hope lots of people have that perspective about me um and so yeah I, I'm just surrounded by such many people I love I, I do now. love yeah it takes an army but I love how open you are you know about your faith because I think you know it's truly like I look at your story and I'm like it, it, as me as a believer like that's like you were meant to be where you're supposed to be. You were meant to leave that locker room. Like, I truly believe, yeah. like, I, I the crazy only met story. You, I've only met you via Zoom right now. But, like, I think that's, I just, I love how open you are about it because I don't think a lot of people are open. Um, and I think, I just think that's really, really awesome. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> no question attached to that. But just kind of, um, as a former player, I love to hear that and, and to hear how open and honest you are about it. That's awesome. Yeah. And it's definitely, you know, for those that are believers, I think it is a really cool, it's a cool perspective because I'm sure there's people that listen to this that aren't at the peak of wherever they want to be. And there's always purpose in, you know, where you land. And sometimes it's quirky how it all works mm -hmm. out, but uh, it's really amazing to think that <laughs> I'm glad he didn't tell you that on the day. I'm glad they didn't pull you in on that day and, and maybe mention yeah. that because it may have been a little bit of a confidence. Your life would have taken a little bit of a different turn. Yeah, a little bit of a different turn. <laughs> but um, anyway, we love to end this with some rapid fire. Um, wait, I do have, have, oh, wait, hold up. I do have a, a, a pre rapid fire question. So okay. I get, a, I, I asked So for your number and she just shares the contact with me and it's Boatsy Boats. Oh yeah. And I go, I go, is this, I'm like, okay, like <laughs> Boatsy Boats, do you want to be on our podcast? And so Boatsy Boats, where did Boatsy Boats come from? Well, Boats, Boatsy Boats is Sophia's nickname of my nickname. My nickname okay. is Boats on the team. Uh, one, because I have big feet, but also because I wear <laughs> shoes that are like a size too big because I like okay my shoes to be a little big um, okay. and so yeah I just look like a when I walk around but but yeah like so just turned it into boatsy boats and okay. other people call me it now too, but yeah but but everyone on the team calls me boats even even Laura and Sam all our coaching staff they all call me that that's just my nickname so oh my god I love that okay good I'm glad I had to ask that I'm like freaking boatsy boats she shares a contact of boatsy boats thanks so much. I, have a, I have a question did you save that at the did you save that as my yeah. contact? Okay, so that's a good, that? no, 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 that's a good question. Um, I initially saved it, and then I was like, I don't think I know her that well to keep it as Boatsy Boats. So now after the pod, I think I'm going to go Amazing. Bethany Balser, and then I'm going to put in parentheses Boatsy Boats, and then hopefully we keep this friendship going, and I'll just take out your name, and we'll have Boatsy Boats. Does that sound like a plan? <laughs> okay. okay, cool. Lovely. We'll get to that point for sure. We'll get to the, Yeah, we'll get to that point, that's for sure. Uh. Love it. All right. All right. All right, Tina. Let's go get ahead. into the uh, rapid fire. You ready? Favorite coffee yes. drink. Favorite coffee drink. An iced Americano with oat milk. Iced Americano with oat milk. Love it. Okay. Describe yourself in three words. Not what I'm drinking now. Oh, drinking it now. Very nice. Very nice. Um, describe myself in three words. Um oh my goodness um loud 
funny. Athletic. Nice. That's all right. Yeah. Pop out. Boy. Favorite team to play and where? Uh, Portland, obviously. Mm -hmm. And where? I mean, people hate playing at our home field, so I love it. People hate yeah. Cheney, but it's great for us. Very, very true. That thing is the smallest thing that I've ever played on. But you don't have to run a lot. That's yeah. the key. That's nice. Current, current favorite saying. takeout. Like specific, like just a food type? Or yeah, like give us a place yeah. out in Tacoma. Give us a place. Maybe One of my best friends lives out there. Uh, so we'll have to tell him. Um, well, I love like sushi. So. Ooh, a little roll. We have, roll we have like action. a sushi place right below our apartment. It's not the best, oh. but it's the most convenient. Yeah, that would be um, good. It's called Neo Sushi. But then um, probably Pokey to the Max. Okay. So, shout out. Television show you recently binged. Um, which one? Have you guys heard of Broadford? Shoot. Broad what? Stable. No, that's okay. Broadchurch. Broadchurch. No, I haven't. No. Set on. It's like a. It's an English show, and Ooh. it is about a boy who gets like killed. Ooh, uh, oh yeah, it sounds morbid. But Peaking my friend. interest: Hulu, Netflix, Amazon Prime, Netflix, Netflix. Okay, I will be watching. Kind of funny. Also, when I'm I watching Only Murder. Oh, girl, you're into like some cryptic. I love shit. this. Only oh, Murder in the Building. It's new on Hulu with Selena Gomez. Oh yeah! Oh I'm yeah! Like, okay, you start that one. I've heard it's good. I've heard it's good. good. Do you listen to my favorite murder podcast? I'm not into like the true crime murder podcast or anything like that. Okay, I just wanted to. I'm not. Curious. And then yeah. current favorite teammate. Oh, um, I do love Soph. We got really close when we lived together in France. Yeah. Um, awesome. so we just have like a special a good one. one. Lover. I love my roommate Leah. She's so fun. I know. I love it's, it's hard to choose. It's hard. It's to hard choose. to choose. It's so hard to choose. We love Soph too. She's like yeah. I've been like meaning to text her because she's one of the most genuine people that I think I've like met along the way. She's just such a good human being. Um. So Soph, if you're listening, you're so real. Yeah. That's what I think about you, dear. Love you lots. Thanks for connecting us in boatsy boats. Yeah, we're very happy and we're yes. really just, I'm very motivated by your story. Yes. And I hope a lot of young players are and a lot of current players are. And um, thank you so much for sharing. Thank it you and so on. much. Yes, this was a blast. I loved it. Thanks for having me. Listen, I appreciate it. Thank you again to Brad Miller from Soccer Resilience for spending time with us and giving a lot of knowledge in the mental health space. We were very fortunate to have a lot of time with him and we're looking forward to bringing on more people that can speak to the importance of mental health and sport, especially soccer. Um, so always provide questions because we're always trying to answer those questions that obviously we're not expertise in, but we know that you're interested in and are important to your success, both on and off the field. We have another great guest coming up this week, Bethany Balser, who's just the epitome of the underdog story. Um, super interesting gal who just has been killing it in the NWSL. Uh, we talk everything from her love of musicals to her journey to the NWSL, which is definitely not traditional, um, and get into all of it. So definitely don't want to miss this one. We will see you next week. Tune in.